City, who is the financial sponsor of the Africa Cup of Nations this year? Well, it is a very well-known bank on mm -hmm. the continent. Mm -hmm. They have done wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And they keep doing wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And in case you're wondering, mm. they have 35 branches across this continent, which has 45, 54 countries. Mm -hmm. And the name is even more fascinating because I often wondered, but it resonates with the times we live in. Mm. EcoBank. Mm. Mm. Yes. Eco. So do you think it Eco means? EcoBank, Eco. I haven't given it thought. I just economy. Like, I just like it could mean many things. That's ecology. the beauty of the word eco. Ecology, economy. Ecosystem. Ecosystem. Hmm? Those mm -hmm. three particularly. Yes, <laughs> but it is a bank that resonates with the continent. Right. It's a continental bank. It's a Pan African bank. That has international reach. Very good. Yes. Please give uh, Cyprian the day's proverb again and let's hear his interpretation of that proverb again again <laughs> where the rooster crows there is a village where the rooster crows there is a village mm -hmm. a village uh, I, 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 I want to liken it with uh, with a country mm. and uh, the rooster is uh, what is domesticated and taken care of so that it can be able to uh, respond Mm. Uh, and help people in that particular area. Mm. And there's a component of time. Mm. In the, I want to associate the rooster with a champion. Every country, every family, every um, community as it is champions uh, who raise uh, an alarm, raise uh, information, uh, you know, uh, like media houses do in this country mm. for everybody to know that this is what's happening and this is what we need to do at this particular time. Good one. <laughs> a good one, a good one, a good one. It is a wonderful one. You guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cyprian, we're still talking about the cost of poverty in this country. You've talked about quality of leadership. You've shown us, all right, so as we look at what we see as the fruits, those fruits have a stem and that tree has roots. At the root of this whole issue is governance and leadership. Governance, you said, three things, religion, corruption, ethnicity, that then just spoils its entire governance structure. And with that, it's the, about outcomes. Yeah. The, the outcomes are what we see. Yes. The people who are poor are just... Yes. The downtrodden. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... And because now, you know, look, I think there is a lot of value, and I, I just want to make this point because we do have a lot of people who are who are listening and and commenting on socials and talking about why do we complain, and I think that in as much as complaining sometimes may seem as a useless um, activity, I think it is necessary to highlight the issues. Yes. Because if you do not, we do not then bear, we do not, we do not comprehend fully mm -hmm. the weight. If we do not hear some of the stories of things that are actually going on, it doesn't dawn on us just how serious the situation is. And we keep saying that the most vulnerable, the person who is living, existing in such a worst a terrible space is the true face of your nation mm -hmm. that you cannot be on this side where people are existing in affluence and like in my country for example you have people who are living in some dilapidated one room standing on stilts i mean it's ridiculous and then we want to say that this is the face of the nation it is not true it's not so i wanted to say that i think it is necessary for us to highlight some of these things so we get the true picture of what we are talking about why? I want us to see how we can make the link then, so mm -hmm. that we can understand, Cyprian. Mm -hmm. When we talk about these horrible, horrible things, truly the cost of being poor, the cost of lacking, the cost of not having, connect that to the solution where we've said that. Mm -hmm. See the link between the people that you put in positions of leadership and mm -hmm. governance mm -hmm. who will institute policies to turn over these things that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. 
the link between the two, I think, is what we need to then be able to connect. Because it's what is missing. Yeah. You're, you're completely right. Let me, let me, as I answer that, I want to say that there are four, there are four things. In sociology, we say that there are, there are four things that tell you about a country. And uh, I'll just list them very quickly. Mm. If you want to know about a country, you look at it as central bus station. <laughs> That's the first thing you look at. Mm -hmm. The second thing you look at is the political, the ruling party headquarters. Mm -hmm. The third thing that you look at is the national, whatever game that is popular in that country, the national team mm -hmm. and how it is cared for mm -hmm. and how it's performing. Mm -hmm. And the last is hospitals for that country, the public hospitals, and the kind of treatment that goes on there. Mm -hmm. Those are the four things that you do. So if you land in Rwanda you, and you go to the bus, central bus station, it tells you the story of that country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the story of the workers of that country. If you go to the political party headquarters of that, the ruling party of that country, that tells you about the institutions of that country. Mm -hmm. If you go to the hospital, it tells you about how women are valued. Because women are the ones who use hospitals most. Mm. To give birth, to take sick children, to take care of relatives, and uh, they are the users of hospitals. Mm. And uh, that has never been understood very well. And finally, the national team and how it is performing and being taken care of tells you about how the youth are valued and how talent is valued. So you will see that the national team of a country like ours, uh, they don't even get paid their basic allowance. <laughs> that tells you everything you need to know about the youth and talent. Mm. Zero. If you go to the central bus station here in Kenya, you will see that that is how workers, that's the general attitude towards workers. Yeah. Right? No toilets. No shelter when it's raining or when it is sunny. Uh, you will see that the dignity of the travelers is not respected and, and the chaos that you see there. Those are four things that you use in social sciences to check what that the state of that country looks like. If you go to Europe... So we don't have structures in this country because does the ruling party have a headquarter? Yes. There is. But to go there, it is only... The person you find there are the people who are useless. Uh, we, Kereitu Murungi said that political parties are matatus. It's true now. That's how we look at Point every a institution. B. Point A to B. Mm. But that's how we look at every institution, including mm. the judiciary, including parliament. Every institution is a matatu mm. for you to use where you need it and forget about it. Mm. So I, I wanted to say that because it's important for people to understand that every country can very quickly be understood. When I go to Europe, uh, countries like Germany, I don't use a private car until I come back because the public transport system is excellent it and it is dignified. It, it functions well. It functions well. It works. Mm. Uh, and so that is how you know that this is a country which values the working people. In the, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, we don't need to give too many examples because Ndu wants us to focus on how do we get the connection <laughs> yeah. uh, between the masses who are actually the cause of their own problems. Mm. Kenyans are responsible for where we are today because we don't ask the basic questions of who are we putting in office. Mm. So we look at the intervening forces that we po say that are the stem of the problem. This is a Muslim like me, a Christian like me, is uh, born again like me, or something like that. Then you ask, but what about the corruption? Ah, everybody's corrupt, mm. all right? And then we ask, what about this ethnicity thing? The only, I've been working with the uh, farmers in Rift Valley, they say that the only time farmers in this country have ever earned what is due to them is when Kibaki was president, which tells you that somebody doesn't have to come from your ethnic community for them to make good policy. Mm. All right. 
good policy is just good policy. So you need to ask yourself, does this person, man or woman, mm. really understand what good policy is? Mm. That is why we interview them during election, election period. But people become emotional. They get attached to uh, their ethnicities, their religion, and then they accept corruption. Money comes, very easy money. Uh, a lot of it which comes from, uh, as you know, crime and, uh, and corruption. Mm. And that is what we accept and exchange for good policies and uh, employment and, and, and five years of, of prosperity. We auction it mm. at, at the election. So the quality of citizenship is very important. Mm. How do we deal with that? I have to blame civil society and the religion in this country because we brought this country from fa a failed state by only two forces, the religious community and the civil society in Kenya. We established what we called the National Civic Education Program. We divided the country 78 districts that time. We didn't have counties. And everybody was given their district. So in every district, there was a civil society organization. And then there was a church committee of uh, pastors and imams and all that. And we conducted civic education across the country. And the people came to understand that governance is what determines outcomes. It's not the, your ethnic community. It is the policy that is in place, is the laws that have been in, uh, put in place. Mm. Apart from uh, citizenship, is about leadership. Mm. Uh, if we are going to put people in place and we want to, uh, our lives to change, then we must put in place competent people who can actually make good policy mm. and who can be able to enforce it and who can be able to use resources without uh, these resources being, uh, being, being stolen. You've said you blame the civil society. And I the blame the civil society. Mm -hmm. But they're the ones who came up with the civic education program. Yes. And you started rolling it out. Yes. So why do you blame them? That, that ended with the Kibaki coming, with Kibaki coming to, to power. Uh, so we have not engaged citizens for at least the last 20 years mm. since Kibaki came to, to power. The engagement, but there are a few organizations who are doing this and that, Uraya and, and a few others. But it is, it is a, a crying, it, it is not, it's a, drop, it's a drop in the ocean. You need structured civic education that runs through the five years, not during election time. Mm. Because at, at election time, what we normally give people is what we call voter education. Yeah. What's the color of the ballot for women reps? It is pink. Mm. That's voter education. Mm. That's not civic education. Civic education, which should be expanded to become political education, is the education which gives people the correct attitudes, skills, and understanding of how the world works. How the world works. But mm. I've seen in this country where the president is even building. Today I've uh, kept away from uh, mentioning names. You and I know that you can't build on public land and sell to private owners. You don't need a, a, a degree in law. <laughs> you don't need to be a professor. The, cal the cal houses that were built in Kaloleni and in Makongeni and in Shaurumoyo and in all these places still public. on government land, you can't sell them. <laughs> you cannot sell them. Mm. So when the president stands on top of vehicles and tells people that uh, he is going to build houses and sell, he knows he's lying. And I don't know why Kenyans are allowing him to do that. The second thing that I have to say about leadership is that we all know that housing is a devolved function. Right now, I'm getting calls at the office from all over the country that this KRA uh, militia they call them marshals, <laughs> are uh, harassing them in their farms, they are counting the animals. The national government, under the constitution, is not allowed to, to charge cess. Mm. The national government cannot collect cess. The county government. It's can. only the county government can do. Mm. So why are, we even, why are we even having these conversations in this country? In the first it, is, it is not supposed to be going on. Right, so the citizens of this country should get a bit serious. So civic education is, is what, what is tells people what the county government functions are, mm. what the national government functions are.
but that so you cannot build on land. Mm. Who's, who's it is job the job is of the state. But in a country mm. where, since independence, we've had governments where, and le let me say this one because people do not know it. In this country, six families and 8,000 Kenyans, six families and 8,000 Kenyans control 90% of the GDP. 90% of the GDP. It's controlled by 8,000 people. Six families. Six families and 8,000 people. They control 90%. We are not a country. We are a plantation. <laughs> we live in people's... <laughs> no, we are not a country. We are a plantation. <laughs> we are not worse. We are not better off than uh, what used to exist in the, in the medieval times when there was slavery and... Uh, because... We, we work for we work for Ruto. Mm. We work for 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 these eight thousand guys. Six families. That's why they can afford to buy houses in Dubai at the cost of two hundred and ten million, two hundred and seven million. That's why Ruto's ministers can import edible oil and, uh, and evade and uh, lose the country loses eleven billion shillings like that. This is why uh, a government minister writes and says, "I want seventeen billion to buy." Uh, 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 oil sub to pay oil subsidy and that money is withdrawn from the consolidated fund which is criminal and illegal which is uh, treason and it's happening so this is interesting that you say this uh, cyprian because you also then talk about civic education being the responsibility of the state because this is for me direct in terms of solutions yes that number one if we had a citizenry who knew some of the things that you're talking about today, the likelihood of somebody in a position of leadership or governance coming to you to tell you something which you know is a fundamental untruth. I say untruth to make it maybe sound a little bit more, you know, <laughs> is a fundamental untruth. Mm -hmm. The likelihood that citizens would listen to and accept that then is reduced significantly. Completely. The reason why in jurisdictions where the state has taken up their role of civic education they then also realize that there are very many things that they cannot do because they know they are dealing with an informed citizenry completely so when you take your position of information seriously when you take your responsibility of sharing that information seriously then essentially we will see a reduction of this gross gross violation violation Relations mm. that we see happening today completely and you will reduce the number of wash wash and scams that go to parliament uh, the reason the president can order eric mm. the, the president can order and tell parliament if you don't pass that finance bill mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. is because he knows from the intelligence that uh, 80 percent of those guys have uh, cases and cr criminal records <laughs> and uh, if they do not give him his bill, he is going to just order a, a lot of them to be rounded around. Unleash files. And you, you'll unleash files. So if you do not elect men and women of credibility mm -hmm. to these houses, those institutions will not function. Mm -hmm. So civic education, political education is very fundamental to changing the quality of citizenship. Because once you change the quality of citizenship, you change the quality of leadership the quality of policies, the quality of programs, and corruption vanishes. And then the country flourishes. The country just flourishes. So it's not complex at all, but we have to do a correct analysis in the problem tree mm. to understand where to the citizens. So the citizens are the main in the middle, and we call them the stem. Mm. They are the, the ones holding the country together. Mm. What they do in the middle in terms of this corruption, in terms of this ukabila, mm. tribalism, and in terms of this problem of religion. Religion is a problem in this country. You have a problem with religion? I don't have a problem with religion, but the kind of religion that is practiced in this country. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. Even in Germany, <laughs> during the Hitler uh, Nazi time, we know that there were nearly 18,000 churches. Only 3,000 churches said we can't allow this kind of uh, persecution and killing of people simply because they are Jew. Mm. Because they knew that once the Jews have been dealt with, mm -hmm. they'll be next. They will be next. Mm -hmm. So they stood up and said, no, gentlemen, 
we don't have a problem with your politics and everything else, but we do not agree with this Nazi ideology. Mm. So what have we done in this country? And we can't do it. We know we can't do it because of the quality of citizens that we have. Mm. So that is where we have to start. And it's very easy. It's doable. We have done it before. And we must defend this constitution. And you are going to see some of us. I, I wasn't supposed to disclose some of these things uh, here, mm. but uh, because you called me. <laughs> I think the president needs to know mm -hmm. that Kenyans are done with him. Completely. Done with him? Completely. Uh -huh. What do you mean? He let's, cannot let's dictate us. Yeah. The president cannot dictate us. Mm. The constitution in chapter 6 says authority given to a state officer is to serve, not to rule. Mm -hmm. That's a constitutional provision in Article 75 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. You are given authority to serve, not to rule. Mm. The president... And the giver of that authority. Yes, the, the giver of the authority is citizens. Mm -hmm. So it, when you read Article 1, Article 2, and Article 3 of the Constitution, Article 1 says the people are sovereign, the citizens are sovereign. Yep. Article 2 says we donate power. Yep. Article 3 says it's our responsibility to defend the Constitution. Mm. There are more than 26 violations that the president has already done. Why is the president doing these things with impunity? Because he knows that the parliament will not impeach him. Uh -huh. So, because parliament is not going to do this, we are now going to the constitution to look at Article 1, Article 2, and Article 3. In the Article 1, Article 2, and Article 3 has given us what we can do to remove a president who has violated the constitution. Uh -huh. Those are the steps we are now going to take uh, so that the president comes back to respecting the constitution which puts him in office. 26 violations are many. Even one is enough. Yeah. 26 are too many. That a president can violate the constitution at will without being checked by anybody. 26 in 18 months. In 18 months. 16 months. <laughs> in 16. In 16 months. 26 violations. 26 violations. How many more to go? Uh, so I, I don't know uh, 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 how, how you, you, can, you can live with a president like that for, for all these years. So we have to come to a place where we ask ourselves, what's the meaning of the responsibility given to citizens in Article 3 to defend the Constitution? So we are going to defend the Constitution. What? Cyprian Nyamuamu is our guest this morning. We want to open up the phone lines after this break. 0719-012-600. Okay? We have a responsibility as citizens. We also are the ones who, as Cyprian is saying, we are the STEM. And if we are the STEM, the quality of citizenship matters. Do you agree with Cyprian when he says... All these things that we are seeing in the country are due to the quality of citizenship that we have in this country. And what is the remedy for that? How do we remedy it? If you agree, tell us how we remedy it. If you don't agree, tell us then what's the problem. Quality of citizenship. That is what Supreme Imam is saying. That is the root cause of the problem. That leads to bad governance. Bad governance and bad leadership lead to what we see as the fruits of this. Where... Things are just not working. Mohammed from Mwakijembe in Kuala County. Salam alaikum. Yes. Wa alaikum salam wangwana. Siko safi kabisa we jewewe. Ha, mina shkuru. Mina atakia mwa kampia nye panaka. Na pia sisi doktor kia the same same. Na mina shkuru sana wangwana hapo studio. Yo, you are looking for a solution. I've been giving you the solution, but you don't want it. Ehe. And to keep on repeating, Pakamun mm. Values. The only thing is character and virtue. Or in other words, moral value. Mm. You know, we can instill and inculcate education, knowledge, professional skills mm. from early childhood. Paka hata kimaliza university na kuwa meiva. Kwani hatuwezi, can't we inculcate good moral values, good characters, good virtues? Mm. Eh? Hidi generation ijayo, 
au the next au the second generation tutakuwa mambo yametengezeka mhm kwa hiyo the big issue is dishonesty greed shona hiyo ndio inafanya matatizo yote tunapata kwa hii dunia yeah. si Kenya peke yake hata ulimwengu mzima so sasa acha nikuulize Mohamed No, no, How do we get back now into inculcating those good moral values? There are, there are, there are, there are very well done syllabuses which mm. has been performed or being used in other uh, other countries. Mm. We can borrow a leaf from them how they did it. Okay. And we can analyze those countries kwa kumbele sana kwa sababu wako na virtue. Mhm. Lakini Kenya tumepungukiwa hiyo tunafunisha math English sivyo nini kuna hapo makigembe hata hiyo english ni shida wanaletea na study kama ya france <laughs> french hata mimi nashangaa you can't they don't even understand english properly you you unaletea french hata mimi nacheka we have our priorities wrong boss <laughs> safi kabisa lakini ya 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 ya, ya virtues mm. na moral values hakuna they are country it's, it's there it's there it's not your rocket science mm hiyo kitu ndio tunaweza msikuweka msingi na hatuwezi kunywa nini yes cafe instant uweke maji lakini ukitaka kutoka gideri mzee eh uweke maji moto kwa maharage na mahindi uweze kula gideri si gideri kuna process lazima uchemshe chemshe masaa mawili matatu basi lakini instant coffee just second unapata kikombe chako cha kahawa sio hivyo kuna kila kitu ina process yake na inategemea Thank lakini you. virtues it will take long kama vile mnasubiria kupata lawyers na doctors na engineers from nursery mnawafundisha mm. na hiyo virtues pia tunaanza kuanzia hapo by the time wakifika embryo flani mm. tutakuta mtu kwa upright kwa na shukuru sana thank you mohamed have a good day have a nice day you too moses jambo good morning in which part of the plantation are you this morning <laughs> <laughs> I'm going from Nairobi. Aha, karibu sana. Well, my my comment is mm. I I love I, I love the conversation. Mm. I love how you guys are analyzing issues. Mm-hmm. Personally, I believe in solution solutions. Now, if we talk of corruption, mm. can we talk of punishing people? That is a solution. Mm-hmm. We don't need much much philosophies. Mm. However, I, I wanted to be uh, there is something uh, Mugeni said Cyprian said about issues at Mudangari police station. Mm. That there is a woman Oh, uh, system that? is frozen. Mm. Sorry, 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 sorry. <coughs> system is frozen. Moses, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. You can hear me? Sorry, we we lost you for a bit. Oh, I was the saying issue at Mudangari police station. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said about a woman who has been there for 8 months. Yep. In Kenya we have various institutions which are allowed by law to investigate such. Yeah. Why can't he probably go to the correct uh, correct offices? Mm-hmm. We have uh, for, we have human rights. Mm-hmm. We have even the OCPD's office. Mm-hmm. When report that this madness I witnessed in one in your police station mm-hmm. where a person has been there for 18 months without being taken to court mm-hmm. and even probably being sexually violated as he has said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was my opinion. Thank you. Sipi, what did you do? The, the the chair of the National Commission on Human Rights Minor Kiai was outside mm. so they took up the case immediately and the uh, people are uh, people lost jobs. Mm. It is part of how we came to insert IPOA inside uh, our laws mm. and the constitution because we needed to decouple the police. So he's right. That's that's th- th- those are the steps we took. Mm. Uh, things can improve if institutions work. But uh, we are getting the institutions are getting worse because of political interference okay kim yes good morning good morning what do you think quality of citizenship uh well i fully agree with him mm. the the fact that civic education has fallen so far that people don't know the choices they're making have consequences mm. is a problem So I just wanted to lend my voice to him mm. that that is something we should look towards yeah to educating young people that the choices they make have consequences to their future. Thank you Kim. Thank you. Kevin in Ahero, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. 
Thank you so much. I love the conversation yes, so sir. much. And uh, I, I would like to encourage people like Cyprian to come out. He's speaking to the soul of the nation. Mm. We have lost a lot as a society. Mm. And as a young man, I'm, 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 I'm a bit worried. Mm. Especially with the plantation ideology. I'm, I'm even worried which plantation am I in. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and then lastly, I would want to say uh, he's a bit too hard on the religious society. They have really tried. Uh, I come from church. I grew up in church. Uh -huh. We are really trying. Uh -huh. The problem is that the people who make a lot of decisions are the ones who have money, and the money mm -hmm. that they have, they can't question. So if we have to follow people, let's follow the money. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, me. Kevin. Mwenye. Good morning. <laughs> Salama sana. <laughs> How's Tala? <laughs> Tala is, uh, is another plantation. Okay. <laughs> now, Cyprian Yamwamu, um, I have a report I have done about corruption in schools. Mm -hmm. There is a classroom, JS, no, no one, two classrooms, JSS. Mm -hmm. They are a disaster waiting to happen through mm -hmm. corruption. Everything to do with that school is absolute theft mm. because the head teacher has corrupted his way up to the the highest levels i think of education ministry mm. he is untouchable right now he's trying to grab my land i have done a letter to that effect which i would like to share with you Ndu, yes you said your the authorities are aware of it they just don't bother mm. true yes because it is a cartel it is, uh, what do you call this, a, a big empire mm. of thieves. It's a criminal enterprise. It's a criminal enterprise. C criminal enterprise. Mm. And, and, and because it's an enterprise, some of the people who deal at the bottom, at the grassroots, are untouchable, like this head teacher here. Mm. Can you imagine the levies on poor people who come borrowing from me mm. to pay for things called French levy? Mm. So, so many levies, of course, they have accepted. He just bought himself a new car. I have done all that. Yes, I have, uh, I have enumerated everything he's done because there are people, these parents who come borrowing money for me to feed his avarice. Mm. Tell me what happens there. The other day, I think yesterday, the day before yesterday, he was beaten up by a, a lady, a parent mm. in that school. Why? I haven't been told because I was told the story yesterday, but he had refused with her money. Mm. This man is a money maniac. Mm. Please allow me, Eric, to send you a copy of that report I did, which I sent to Transparency International, but I did have your contact. And then the tragedy is the media, sorry to say, don't want to cover some of these ills. Mm. I have talked to some media, powerful ones, they don't want to come because there is no child for them. Mm. Please can spice Take up this issue. I'll send you the report with your permission, yeah. please. I would like to send you this. And Yamwamo, I'd like to talk to you also about other evils, and especially the church. That's the biggest criminal enterprise in this country. Morning. They have also grabbed our land. We have your number. We will get in touch Thank you. through Edna. Please you'll, do, you'll get, yeah, we'll please do as soon as possible because share. I hope also my life is not in danger because of I have uh, informed the OCS in Tala mm. that I could be attacked. Hi, Paulu. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so calling. much. Please, add, yeah, let me send you the call, the, the, the report. We will, we will, we'll appreciate it. Thank you so much. Asante. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day ahead. You too, Mwini. Sami. Zima Radio, Kaka. Zima Radio, Kaka. Zima Ah, uh, okay. John, how are you? How are you, Eric? Salama kabisa. Soba? Yeah, this, this is John from Kajado. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Just want to weigh in on your conversation and thank you guys. Sante. Yes, and I would like to zero in on education. Mm. You know, this education system of ours, mm. I think the president is in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at it holistically, this this money is to be paid through that pay bill number. I don't think even you will have sorted the issue because the the ed teachers are very smart. Mm. 
most of this, uh, like tuition money, what is levied at the secondary school, primary school, these monies don't go through those main accounts. Mm. In fact, you are asked to send to the specific class teachers. So you see, they are very smart. Mm. And I think this era of thieves needs to come to an end. I think that's all you need to share. Thank you. Let them pursue these thieves, mm. let them go hang. Mm. We are tired as Kenyans. We hear you. Thank you, John. Karen Kilelesho, hello. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. to you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I think um, uh, I like what uh, Cyprian has shared with us throughout the morning, but uh, as a country, the moment we failed to nail Chapter 6, and especially members of Parliament mm. who uh, uh, w w were tasked with the responsibility of uh, generating, um, enabling legislation, to, to implement Chapter 6 mm. and Article 10 of the Constitution. Mm. That is where we got it wrong as a, as a country. Because if you go to, if, if, if that the standards, the real standards of uh, Article 10 and Chapter 6 of this Constitution are, uh, are, are placed against the current leadership, mm. none would be in public office. Then we get to the problem where, uh, because people without integrity have occupied the high spaces in, in managing affairs of this state, mm. our country is going down every day. Yesterday was the worst day in, in, in terms of appointing anyone into public office, where this, uh, we've seen a, a collapse of a, of a very critical case. Mm. Uh, and this should be a lesson to Kenyans, because if a person comes from your home area, mm. you are, you are a, a politician from your own area can sabotage a program that is meant to help you people. Yeah. Uh, your own program that was supposed to, because a dam is a very critical infrastructure in those parts of the world. Mm. They come from those parts of the world. They sabotage the program. The Auditor General's report is very, very clear, and everybody can see. It pointed out towels were supplied and bed sheets. A, 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 an Italian company that was supposed to construct those dams supplied towels and bed sheets to a certain hotel belonging to a certain person. Mm. The Auditor was very clear, and the person was named, and nothing has happened mm. then we see uh, uh, the cases and even the uh, even the collapse of the case the judge was you, you you hear the tone of that judge and you see frustration and pain in the heart of that judicial officer yeah and you feel even sorry instead of feeling sorry for your country you feel sorry even for the judge himself because they the, the, the withdrawal really hurt that judge yeah and we are withdrawing a case that would have sent shockwaves into the civil public service and made people responsible mm. but that is what it is so uh, do we just keep quiet as citizens? What do we do? Cyprian says they, we apply Article 1 and the other articles that... Um, uh, but, but, but again, you remember that we are a tribal society. These guys will run to their communities to cry there. Their communities, because well, of lack of civil education, mm. Mm. will not understand that you are, you, are targeting, you are doing this for their own good. The they will three, think you are finishing their person. The three so issues that brief, you talked that about. That's what I have to say this morning. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Asante, Harry. Tony, uh, Tony, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you, Latin? Very well. Where are you this morning? I'm in Kilifi in a plantation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staring at the site of plantation. Okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm uh, very happy with, uh, with Cyprian because of articulating some of these issues which really we have been observing and uh, we, we feel most I think majority of Kenyans agree, agree completely. We only have but only one problem. Mm. You know, okay, I don't have any problem with religion. I'm also a staunch Christian and all that. Mm. But it is true what he says about religion. Mm. But there is one thing in the Bible, uh, <laughs> Jesus said, he without him cast the first stone. Mm. So if we are going to choose these people in leadership position, mm. that parliament, that senate, all of them have their own issues. So if somebody can take advantage of that, so you see, we are all uh, we find ourselves in this situation. And issues, yes. But but uh, notwithstanding, my issue is one: I'm a civil servant. Mm. Now there are these forms we feel which are called. Uh, Wealth Brand declaration. Yeah. Yes. Now they have added a portion mm. where you put your your better half. Yep. Well, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to also say how much 
she earns and you know mm. and all the details about your spouse the wealth of your spouse oh yes the wealth of your spouse where she works and uh, her work number all those things mm. so is this uh, that constitution i don't know i'm not a lawyer these articles we hear them and some <laughs> Tony, you I, know some people always go to, do you think uh, that's articles, a violation yeah? I think so. It's Why should I go and find out? I don't even know how much my wife earns, <laughs> and it's none of my business. I think it's uh, private business, you know. <laughs> many Cyprian arguments, can many arguments some on lunch. that. Yeah. He'll, he'll, we'll, we'll hear, we'll hear Cyprian's take on it. Thank you very much, Tony. Yeah. Enjoy the Kilifi yeah, plantation. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you, Hassan. Moha. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What do you think? Is it quality of citizenship? Uh, there's something that has been happening for a while. Um, the people who we used to look up as elders, who we used to know as elders back then. Yeah. Right now what we have are elders, but uh, with their own personal interest. Mm. I'm sure some time back, uh, and this is not an end I'm mentioning, this is just a, a simple uh, person and it's an example I want to draw from it, mm. from mentioning this person. Remember sometime Jalango went to parliament to, to State House for development. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now we have uh, the current uh, day elders who've gone for State House for something similar, mm. for their own kind of development. Mm. Similar to that of Jalango in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Now imagine having a conversation trying to show uh, uh, a fellow citizen that uh, a policy that is being implemented is not being implemented for your right, mm. while the same uh, citizen has a, 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 an elder that they look up to who went to parliament and has come and sold them this idea that this policy is meant for you. Mm. This is why it's being forced down your throat. This is why it, uh, someone has rushed to court. This is why someone at uh, the executive is blowing a gasket, because mm. it's good for you. This is why they have to buy media time mm. to tell you why this thing is good for you. Mm. You do not know it's good. It has to be forced down your throat for you to know it's good. <laughs> Do you know how do you know how, how an uphill task that is <laughs> to convince this person who uh, one of the mzees um, or the church church guys or the mosque guys has gone to parliament and has gone to okay this stuff so now we want to have a conversation yeah. with this person and tell them this thing is wrong we're going to suffer we're going to be in problem so is the problem the elder or the problem the recipient of the information <laughs> There's a there's a there's part of this system that has been uh, how how should I put it that has been uh, messed up order. in one way or another. Mm. <laughs> the the order has been distorted. Mm. distorted. Back then, I used to remember when I was very young, my 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 mzee would uh, visit some uh, old man somewhere, and when he's talking, mm. though I was that young, mm. I I. I'm like marveling at the words coming of the, out of this Mzee's mouth, mm -hmm. who my dad is listening to. Mm. But right now, I'm looking to find those kind of Mzee's. All I see are people with personal interest. They have gone to State House for development. Right. They go take pictures. When they come back mm. to the to the to their uh, to their community, mm. they, they, are, they are coming. They are, they are coming to earn their keep. Their their their, their pay. <laughs> True. So, uh, uh, the development, you. the development that they went to get in set house. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Moha. You're welcome. Thank you. Read some a couple of comments on our social media, and then we hear uh, Cyprian's take on. Well, I mean, there's quite some. In years mm. to come, we shall have a semblance of great leaders, says David Olol. Watch, the leaders we have now are all products of Kenya post independence. The more advanced in age, the worse they are due to mind rigidity, is what he says. Mm -hmm. Um. If the Kenyan constitution was being used accordingly, or even 90%, we would be very far. But what we have as leaders in the political or business field are mostly hyenas. Mm. Me and my people first okay. is what it is. All public property is taxpayers' property. We will not pay for other people to acquire assets at our expense. Well, according to Cyprian, that has already happened. Mm. Um, and just looking at... Uh, 
and it's a lot of banter here the tribe is another stupid identity that we are kenyans are blindly exactly. supporting mm. to our own detriment mm. um why can't we have this civic education begin in media spaces because government for sure won't support it because mm. that's their bread that's what we are doing yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i mean there's quite a lot but look at that it seems mm. to be an agreement that we're mm. in a bit of a tight spot here but the answers are looking at us in the face they are they are right here mm. <coughs> that we are responsible mm. for our lives and uh, i agree with the the gentleman who began us off by saying that values and the character is at the core mm. is at the core uh, but where that does where does that come from it comes from the kind of leadership you, you have in place uh, the value system in this country <coughs> is determined like everywhere else about the reward system in short in kenya the the people who do good are punished mm. the people who do bad are rewarded because of that mm. that is why people have stopped doing good to do bad so that they can be rewarded because you know even the kinds of people who are being appointed daily yeah are those who have done bad those who have done good will never be appointed mm. so in fact it's a badge when you see somebody being appointed you almost you certainly know, know they've that done, uh, they've done something that wrong. some somebody who has done something very bad against the state against the people of kenya mm. and the the solutions are out here we have to rise up we have to organize mm. uh in pan-africanism we say stop agonizing mm. and start organizing, organizing. Mm. that's why we have formed uh, you know alliances uh, like uh, kenya bora to itakayo we, we don't want to just sit and complain we know there's something we can do we've done it before we can do it again we can deliver this civic education mm. we can organize kenyans to rise up and take action mm. we have been going to court uh we we go to court almost every day mm. uh, just three days ago you saw we went to court to stop this uh, collecting fees uh, to through e-citizen mm. we we our life have has become one of waiting for the brutal government to uh, make a bad policy and for us to stop it so a ton of vigilance yeah. has become a responsibility except that it's only for very few of mm. us i wish it was for very many mm. so that there are many people standing up for their rights mm. uh, rather than uh, you know keeping it to a very few number of people in the country you've said very many good things this mm. morning cyprian and we thank you very much for that um yeah we'll 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 be with touch in in touch with mweni and um yeah. to get that that information and mm. also share it with you as well and mm. share her number with you so yeah, you two sure. can mm. also communicate mm. this is the situation room the only way to start your day